I'm a senior technical writer and like a lot of people who might not be in IT or might not have been in IT for um, a long time, they might not realize what the heck that is. They're like, what are you, a writer who just, you know, says that you can write technically? You know, what's your deal? And some people out there might say, I write. I want to be a technical writer too. Um, it is actually kind of a cool career um, because you do make IT money, you know, and that's really a bonus, um, especially if you have IT credentials and you just want to punk out and just say, look, I don't want to do all that coding, testing stuff, the designing, architecture, um, you know, back end type stuff. You don't want to do all of that. And if writing is your thing, then hey, technical writing might be for you. But just in case you've ever wondered, I thought I would share a career path because a lot of people, they have these careers and you're wondering, how on earth did you get that job? You know, how is it that you're working in your kitchen? I want to work in my kitchen too. And so for those of you who might want to work in your kitchen and wonder, um, you know, if it's something that you might want to do or can redirect your career path into that particular direction, then I'm here to share a little insight as I take a mental breather from the work. So first off, you might wonder what are the educational requirements to be a technical writer? Did you start off being a technical writer? Absolutely not. First off, um, I think the bare minimum requirements would be a bachelor's of science usually, but I know someone with a bachelor's of arts um, who has a degree in journalism. And so she took a few paths and, um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the paths you might take in order to get there. But I'm thinking the basic requirement is a bachelor's degree, although some technical writing jobs will ask for a master's. Um, but I don't think it's that serious. It just really depends on the type of material that you're working with. Um, I think the people that I work with think I have a master's. So it, it really doesn't matter, but you need to start with a bachelor's degree. So, okay, check. If you have a bachelor's degree, then um, what type? Well, um, my degree is in computer information systems. And um, the crazy thing is I started off in electrical engineering when I really wanted to be a journalism major. But I grew up in the projects of Augusta, Georgia. And I was like, I'm not going to college to be poor. Poor, my student loans would be higher than what the journalism salaries of the late 80s were. And so I just said, no can do. Guidance counselors, teachers said, you know, girl, you better major in something technical. So I did electrical engineering because I had an internship with EI DuPont at the time, and they forced me to pick a, an engineering discipline um, in order to get the internship, which I did, which oddly enough, it turned out to be a computer science internship. And so I'm I'm so old that the first computer that I worked with in a corporate setting was the Apple Lisa. I kid you not. And I was using punch cards and all that other good stuff, working with COBOL. And, um, but yet I was an engineering intern. So that was kind of interesting. But like by the time I got to my senior year, well, my first senior year, that is, at Clemson University back in the 80s, I got an epiphany or like a, a revelation you ain't never getting out of here with an electrical engineering degree because I hated it. All of the courses that had to do with writing, talking, you know, um, those were classes that I did very well in, even surprisingly finance. Um, I can, I'm a mean lady with um, a financial calculator too. I could calculate, calculate your PITI for you if you wanted me to. But anyway, I digress. So, um, so I was in, in electrical engineering, didn't have the 3.0 to keep my internship with DuPont. So I had a wake up call um, during my senior year because I had a, a class called Vectors or Statics and Dynamics, and it was about vectors, which I didn't get. And so they said, you drop this class twice. The next time you get in it, you're going to have to stick with it. And I realized, I was like, I don't understand vectors. I want out of this. And so I had to decide on a major that I could get out of there with because I wasn't leaving without a degree. And so I switched to computer information systems, which had just been invented at the time. Um, and so um, I thought about computer science, but I'm not good at coding. I can't code my way out of a paper bag. So it's like funny how um, God has 
an, an idea in mind for you, but you don't always know what it is. Sometimes the way that you know what the path is for you is what you're not good at. Sometimes it's what you're good at, the way that I was great at creative writing, you know, I was great at English, um, but I was terrible at coding. And, um, and so then after a while I said, well, maybe computer information systems, because back in the 80s, that was computer science life. You had some programming, but you also had um, technical writing, you had um, public speaking, finance classes like accounting, all sorts of things to give you exposure to some of the areas where you might be working in. Because all of those companies, um, whether they're in finance, whether it's in telecom, they all have IT departments and someone needs to help write the deliverables. However, back in the 80s, they didn't know that. So technical writers as a job didn't really exist. So what happened was um, like if I was on a computer science project back in the day and then the people were like, OK, I'll code it, you know, I'll test it, you know, I'll do the um, the graphical um, user interface or whatever the GUI. And then I'm just like, I don't want to do any of that. And so then they're like, well, Carolyn, you know, you have to contribute to the project. What do you want to do? I was like, can I write the user manual? Ding, ding, ding. I didn't know it was technical writing at the time, but me volunteering to write the user's manual or um, user's guide or whatever, that was a contribution to a technical project. So with that said, if you have a computer science degree, can you be a technical writer? Of course. But most people who are computer scientists or people who code or great with debugging code, they usually don't have the gift of writing or if they do, if they're like these wonderfully blessed creatures who can do both, they don't have the patience for it. You really have to have the patience for writing and that has to be your thing. So get your bachelor's. It could be in computer information systems. Although, like I said, I know someone who has an English degree and she spent quite a bit of time doing technical writing, but it was under the umbrella of being a business analyst. So um, I also knew someone who had an accounting degree and so she was doing work that could be considered technical writing as well um, so it doesn't really matter if you get exposure but you need a bachelor's okay so and I'm always writing so that's why you see a notebook on the table as well because my mind is just firing firing so anyway so um, because there's so many um, different technical writer positions um, just because you don't qualify for one or it doesn't um, like if you don't, don't qualify for one that you see out, like say on LinkedIn or um, what are the other um, things like Dice or um, Indeed, like you might go out there and say, let me look to see if there's some technical writing jobs that I qualify for. For every hundred that I see, I might only qualify for five of them. So don't let that deter you. So say you have your bachelor, say you have some writing experience, you've been in IT, you're not going to qualify for the majority of what you see. So don't let that deter you, especially if you have credentials in hand. Mm. But I want you to focus on the main thing that really gets me in the door and keeps me gainfully employed. Um, some of your natural ability. Like I said, God doesn't always show you exactly what you should be doing, but it might be a clue to you if you have some of the following natural abilities, which I wrote down today while I was working on a deliverable that I have to um, send out the final version next week. So I'm kind of in a tizzy. Um, so a natural ability that I would think would be very important. One, you must be able to write well, and that's my gift. I can write really well and so like I can look at say a template or format that somebody wants something in I could look at an example of what was delivered before that and then you give me some sources and some kind of way I can just like pull all of those pieces together and the next thing you know I'm just like and I look at it and I'm like you know, it's just like somebody who's a baker and, you know, they take the milk and the, the flour and the eggs and they put it together and they bake this wonderful cake. That's what I can do with written deliverables. 
that's my gift and my strength. And so you, if you want to be a technical writer, you have to be able to do something similar. You need to be able to write well. Grammar needs to be your thing, you know, um, and also you need to have like kind of an ear the way some people have an ear for music. You have to have an ear for what actually sounds good, what's going to impress and razzle dazzle and could be used for multiple audiences, whether they are very technical or whether they're lay people, like um, if they're executives or business owners, um, you need to be able to write for a variety of audiences. And then also you need to have a desire to seek out information and a willingness to talk to any and everybody being politely persistent, not being worrisome or annoying where people don't want to help you, but like, you know, just gently pursuing the information that you need for your document. One thing that um, I notice in most IT environments, yeah, I've worked in, you know, like pretty big companies. And so people don't have a lot of patience for handholding. So the whole, well, I don't know how, you know, how do I get that? You know, I can't find it. I couldn't find it. I can't do it. No one really has any tolerance or patience for that. So like what I do for any document that I'm working on, I figure out what it should look like. Um, What parameters do I need to work in? And then I go through and I do as much as I can humanly do. And then I leave questions or issues and comments within the document. Another thing um, that leads me to that you need is a familiarity with uh, Microsoft Office Suite. Like, so can you use Word, um, Excel, PowerPoint, um, Visio? Also to be able to use Teams with Microsoft Outlook. Teams is often used um, in IT environments as a veneer. I like to think of it as for SharePoint. So like you need to be able to put documents out on um, the repository that's known as SharePoint or some other companies might not use those, but a lot of the bigger ones are using Microsoft Office Suite. So whether it requires you to take a class or for you to take a job that you might not want for a time to get exposure, because I had this horrible job that's in my top three least favorite um, favorites where I wound up out of the workforce for a while because I would I'm known for volunteering for layoffs and taking time out with my kids before I became an empty nester and so I was kind of left behind as my oldest son would say and so one of the jobs that I took as a technical editor I had never really been officially a technical editor but because um, my career path started off as a systems analyst because back in the 80s I read in Cosmo, which I don't read now, but back then it was saying that the systems analyst was the career of the 2000s. So for that reason, I majored in computer information system or switched my major to it and said, hey, I'm going to be a systems analyst. Even worked for PricewaterhouseCoopers for a time. Hated it. Um, But it was there that um, my lead, Teresa Nishimoto, asked me finally, because I think she probably noticed my lack of interest and the fact that they love to work long hours. I did not. At five o'clock, I left. I kid you not, my manager, one time I was there like at 515, she actually fell on the floor and said, Carolyn Gray is here after five. Um, I had just gotten married. You know, they were doing great, wonderful things, you know, working with the U.S. Postal Service, a lot of the automated um, services that you see now. The people at Price Waterhouse Coopers, or back then it was called Coopers and Library, they did that work and they were doing a great thing. But I had just got married. I wanted to go home. I had seen movies like... Um, nine to five. I thought you literally worked nine to five. I had no idea that IT a lot of times required you to work longer hours. So all of that to say, Teresa Teresa Nishimoto, I thank her because she asked me one day, what do you like to do? Um, I said, I like to write and I like to talk. And she said, okay, great. Would you like to, um, would you like to work on this methodology document? And I was like, bet I do. And so next thing you know, I'm like, and it's like, I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I'm supposed to do in this arena. And then also she would let me do um, brown bag lunches where you could like research a topic and you would give a, you know, a message to the team on it. And so I didn't care for that as much. The material was kind of dry, but the whole talking and writing thing, that's where I got the idea. So I went from being a a, biz, a systems analyst, you know, software engineer, and then eventually the business analyst came about, which is um, 
you know, it used to be kind of like, um, I guess, what a systems analyst was, but all of a sudden you're an analyst that knows more about the business, which is why my computer information systems degree, um, you know, kind of was an asset at that particular time. And so after taking some time off with my kids, I wound up getting an opening at MCI, which is how I got into telecom. And so I got a chance to have exposure. So even if jobs aren't ideal, if you can get into a place, Place and gain exposure and so even though I was listed as a business analyst I wound up writing and I wound up you know just getting some familiarity with IT concepts and so that opened the door to like Nextel and to Sprint and then next thing you know I'm doing business analysis and management and then it led to Sprint where all of a sudden um, I became a PM as well as a business analyst but in all of these jobs I gravitated towards writing deliverables. So what I'm saying is even if you're a developer right now and maybe crying at the subway station like I used to when my husband used to pick me up, you know, maybe you can volunteer to write something while you're in that arena. Say you're a tester, maybe you can volunteer. Say you're a PM, say you're in management. Cause like I said, I was in management, but I was still writing and I was reviewing people's documents, um, which was giving me editorial skills so I could honestly take a title of a technical editor, which um, they turned it into so much more. I hated it. Um, I like to write. I don't want to be a technical editor. That can be a subset of my responsibilities, but I have to be true to myself and I like to write. Would I love to be a YouTube superstar? Yeah, sure. That would be great. But I can honestly say that technical writing, when it's an area that I actually enjoy, um, it does bring me joy. So that's one way you can get your foot in the door. Look at what you really love to do. Figure out the area that um, that you want to fit in. Because maybe you don't like to write. Maybe you like to edit other people's writing. You could be a technical editor. That brings IT money as well. So get your degree. Um, figure out what you want to do. Look out. You know, start looking out onto the different job boards to see what the um, technical editors are um, <clears throat> not technical editors, but technical writer um, positions are looking for. See if there are even a few of them that you can fit in and, you know, kind of shape your experience, even if you have to take a lesser job to get the exposure and the experience that you need. Um, I think that that could open the door for you to be a technical writer. Or like I said, if you're already in a door, see if you can find opportunities to do that work. And so that's what I've been doing and taking the task of talking too much. It allows me to go in and all of a sudden I'm laughing and I'm joking, being nice to people, politely persistent, asking a boatload of questions. At home, it's annoying because my kids and my husband, they're like, you like to ask a lot of questions, but you don't like to answer questions. It's true. But like a manager can like have someone like me and say, um, you know, what I want is I want A, B, C, D, E. And because I'm a person who likes to seek out new information and also because because I like people to do exactly what I tell them. When I'm sitting over there as corporate Carolyn, if my manager says, this is how I want it, this is how he's going to get it. Like the SOS band back from the 80s, I will give it to you just the way you like it. And you know, I'll give you advice or thoughts if you're open to receiving it, if you've asked me. But for the most part, if you say, this is how I want it, you're paying my rate. Um, I'll do it. You know, there may be some caveats. You know, here's the document. I'll put a few notes in it, you know, to raise flags, put items on the table for you to consider. But at the end of the day, as a technical writer, especially if you're a consultant or a contractor, you're there to perform a service and to get the job done. And so that's what I do as a technical writer. And I've been working from home doing that since March of 2020. Prior to that, um, I was working from home as a technical editor and technical writer due mainly to space constraints in the business that I worked in, and they were allowing me to do it a few days a week, but COVID made it a full-time gig. And then now that people have experience with me working from home, um, no one has asked me to come into an office, and I really don't want to because I could be at Myrtle Beach, I could be in Martha's Vineyard. They have no idea, nor do they care. All they care about is that I'm online, you know, and working, I'm producing my deliverables for eight hours a day, 
at a minimum and that um, that I do everything that they need me to do and that I'm responsive during the core business hours. And since, since I'm such an obsessive compulsive, I usually don't even leave the house. That's how I have time to do these little videos. And the way my son set up the kitchen, um, the computer um, with the camera and everything is here and so I can just go back and forth. So that's how you're seeing the videos. That's my little woosah <sighs> moment. But for anyone who ever considered technical writing, there you go. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to fill in the blanks for anything that I might not have um, shared with you clearly or completely. But for now, I gotta see what's going on with my work and if I have a free moment, I might even do an outfit of the day. We'll see what's happening. But for right now, guys, I hope that helps and that's all I got for now. Until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.